Now, look at what they show us as the uh, dinosaurs. They show us in the cartoon Taming Dragons that we was going up to the nest, stealing the eggs, hatching the eggs, raising the dinosaurs, learning how to ride them. Right, right, right. Right. In the Avatar, they show us riding dinosaurs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Dragons. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the difference is in Avatar, they have their hair connects to a part of the animal for them to communicate. We do right. it telepathically. Right, right, right. So one of the reasons they started gator baiting in, in the South was because those are the Sobek priests that was on the land used to ride around on alligators. Say, like say, you say that one more time. The Sobek priests uh -huh. from the South uh -huh. When we say Sobek priests, that mean the priests who hold alligators and crocodiles as a sacred totem animal okay. and interact with them in such a manner. Right. Would be called priests of Sobek. Sobek is the spirit guy of the alligator. Uh -huh. So okay. like out of all of the alligators, when you tune in to them and they collective unconscious manifest as Sobek in human form. Mm hmm. Right. So the human responsible for the caretaking of the alligators and the crocodiles or the crocodilians of the world would be classified as Sobek priests. They are the, probably the oldest line of priests um, that's still functional. Right. Like in, in just a tribe in Africa, that's a Sobek tribe was what we would call them. They live with crocodiles. The, mm -hmm. They baby fall in the water. The crocodile bring him back up and put him on the bank if he drowning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you do that in the Nile, your ass is dinner, mm. right? But if you do that where they at, and you from that clan, they got to understand it not to eat the human, right? And they swim with them, fish by them, ride them. Mm -hmm. wow. They have they have old pictures of people riding. Uh, drawings of people riding the backs of alligators and crocodiles. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is because this, was, this practice was interrupted with the Gullah Wars. With the Gullah Wars, okay. So they start gator baiting the gators with the babies yeah. in order to get the, the gators with the taste of our flesh because they wouldn't eat us. Mm. They would eat the imposters, the invaders, but if we was laying there dead, they wouldn't eat us. Mm-hmm. So the invaders start using the babies and they didn't just throw them out to the alligators. They would cut them open and throw them in the alligator mouth. And then his nature take place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then over time, they lose their sense of connection to the people they used to ride them. Right, right, right. Right. Now you see what they call gator farmers incorporating mm -hmm. pale faces in the priesthood of Sobek. Mm hmm. And they walk around, play with them alligators, but they know how to respect them and stay out that damn snapper. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. But then you got some like it's a Sobek priest in South America who lived with his crocodile, saltwater crocodile. Mm -hmm. He left his family and moved into a hut on the bay on the river so he could live with his crocodile. Mm -hmm. Like they, the crocodile come out, crawl up in the with him and they sleep next to each other crazy shit but mm -hmm. it's the it's the communication mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the frequency that he's able to control the um interaction on a spiritual level where the crocodile don't see him as prey what you he, he, yeah. he made him in a laboratory for um earth to be a safari for the andromeda being Inky made dragons in a laboratory so Earth could be a safari for the Andromedan beings. Yeah. Okay. That was a treaty, a peace treaty between the matriarchal Andromeda um, queen, hive queen, mm -hmm. and, the, and Isis. Mm -hmm. So back then, see, all of these are cycles. We have to have a script. 
that describes the cycles. Uh -huh. In in this script, they wrote it in. It's a treaty between Andromeda and Earth. They was given a period of time to come and hunt the um the great lizards, the giant lizards. Right. Right, because they wanted challenging game. Right. They didn't use like for instance in the movie Predator. Uh -huh. If you go to Predator versus Alien with Sanaya Latham, this is what made them like they end up bonding a pack with the Earth women. Mm. So the Earth women got invaded by the aliens now. Mm -hmm. So the um, predator beings, the Andromeda beings, become allies in the war against the new reptilian aliens, which is actually from um, they Syrians, but they Syrian exiles. Why did they get exiled? For the same shit they get in exile from Earth. Whew. Not giving respect to the rules of the planet and trying to use, use um, universal rules to usurp the rules to the earth. Mm. So you try to use the higher rules in the wrong way and it takes away free will in a free will universe mm. because you turn it upside down and backwards. Mm -hmm. So the people believe they're using free will, but it's an illusion that's created by the invader to subjugate the people and to uh, absorb their essence, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, galactic warfare. Yeah, no, it seems that way. Yeah. And, and they, they've been telling us about the mm -hmm. war in heaven, mm -hmm. right? The war in heaven play out in ancient Egypt as Set versus Osiris. Mm -hmm. The bird people versus the reptile people. Mm -hmm. Right? So, um, it's reenacted over and over again until somebody saw the problem. Mm. And then you go to a whole new set of systems in new cycles. Mm. Right? The next system, the sun cycle comes in, which means it has to deliver us a golden age. So the seeds of the, the uh, moon cycle is gestating in order to produce the bounty for the sun cycle. Okay. Right? So you're going from winter to summer. Mm -hmm. This is the transitional period, spring. Right? So all of the things that we put into motion by the conditions of the old cycle, we can now cash the karma in to pay for the next future. Right. And then that's why the old ones have to be at the bottom and the new ones have to be on top because the new ones come in with no karma. They got to create good and bad karma. Right, right, right. OK. Right. Because they got to try to get into a cycle that allows them ascension. But it's a whole lot of other stuff. Genetics in play. Um, spiritual development, all of these different things is at work at the same time. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is why it's life is three dimensional when you live in it. But when you outside of the body is two dimensional. And that's why you can read your book of life using out of body experience. Mm. Mm. It's because it's like literally like reading a book. Cause yeah, book you can see the whole timeline now. Mm. Like looking at the script of a movie or looking at a um, film of a movie, holding it up, you can see whole scenes at a time. So our ancestors that moved on, like let's say my mother passed away, so she could see the, my whole timeline right now. She could see the whole timeline from beginning to end. So that's why we ask our ancestors for help, because they know the timeline. They're not restricted by the confines of time right? or right. space. Right, right. They in energy state. Yeah. And from the energy state, we have a secondary creation part that we go to coming into the physical. Mm -hmm. And this is where you see your whole life before you take on the form to determine if this is the one that you really want to deal with. You know, quick question. This is a little off topic, but I asked, I had Billy on yesterday, Billy Carson. And since we're talking about ancestors, 
you know how spirits take over bodies sometime or walk-ins. Yeah, walk-ins or whatever. The fire element. Go back to the the cartoon Avatar with Aang. Remember Aang? Yeah, yeah. Okay, he had to master all four elements before he can get the final element of ether. Mm-hmm. Right? This is what you're doing when you're dealing with the the focal point of fire, earth, air, and water is you focus on a part of your own inner magic. Mm-hmm. Okay. As you become, it's once you get those four down, the combination of them makes you have to now work from the ether. Mm. working with ether is where they call metaphysics It's the quantum field, the quantum level. Right. Right. So it's the, each one of them, uh, water, earth, air, and fire is the four elements. And they also represent the four cardinal directions, mm. right? The fifth cardinal direction that's represented by the ether is straight up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what they call polaris the north star mm. right straight up so if you straight up and you in the center and you've made a 360 in development you've seen the whole field in the terrain now you got to get a bird's eye view so you have to go to the ether to see it mm, mm. right as above so below mm-hmm. so now all you have to do is reverse engineer what you see on earth by looking up and imagine what's being projected to the earth on the ground. Mm-hmm. And this is how they teach you how to navigate by the stars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just all of this is to formulate the mind to do a conceptual physics formula by looking at the position of stars in the position that they is on the planet. Mm-hmm. And you know where you at on the planet by the position of the stars. Right. Uh, that's why they call it navigation. Got you, got you. Let Navy, me Navy Gates. Navy Gates. <laughs> to, so, so to get back to the whole dragon thing, um, right? So, how did this whole experiment? You said Inky invented the dragons in the laboratory. How did this whole dragon experiment work out for Inky and the Andromedans? What ended up happening with the dragons and Andromedans being the, con- the-, the contract expired? Right yeah. when the contract expired, now they create an artificial ice age, a nuclear mm. winter. Mm. Who who created this? This was It, it was going to happen anyway because it's the yeah. war of the Anunnaki's fighting each other, family feuding on Earth. The yeah. war on heaven landed on Earth. It shouldn't have got nothing to do with us. That's the family feud of some beings from another place, and they want us to think they some holy divine entities, Yeah, and they want us to pick sides in their conflict. Yeah. Right, it's a war between the two sons of the king fighting for the throne. Yeah, yeah. Right, so they get parts of the kingdom appointed to each one of them according to their skill set and capabilities. Mm-hmm. Right, but the wise general gonna always have somebody that can do a function that the other general can do that he can't. Mm-hmm. So he can delegate that aspect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing in the military on Earth. It's the same thing in the gangs, which is tribes, mm-hmm. right? It's part of the cultural dynamic, but they play it out in regimented form in order to confuse your mind because we trapped in cycles. So they run us through straight lines in the circle. So we get, all we doing is catching up to our tail. Mm-hmm. We ain't never really making progress. We just going in circles. And we laugh at the dog that chases tail, but we chase ours all the time. We're doing the same thing. Wow. Mm-hmm. So the Andromedan beings, you said they had a matriarchy system. Is that is that like an all female planet, or how does how does well, it work? this the, it's a matriarchy? Women are the lawgivers. The men enforce the law. Mm-hmm. Right. In a patriarchal system, the man is a dictator because he had to hold his position above all other men by force. Mm -hmm. In the matriarchy, you don't have to hold, you don't win by force. 
you win by love and respect. Most love, most respect, it gets to position. Mm -hmm. Right? So you develop yourself to be the most loved and most respected. Yeah. Right. That's how you gain. That's how we uh, become chiefs. First, you got to have the blood and the right. Then you got to put in the work so that you can have something to offer that don't nobody else got to offer. Right, right. Right. And whatever you got to offer that can't nobody else do, you the chief of that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this is how they, this is why in the industry, the, the entertainment industry, they steal the rights from the artist. That's really what the selling of the soul is. Mm. You giving up your soul essence for somebody else's financial gain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's your creation. The things that you bring into fruition from your higher consciousness into the 3D realm. And now they capitalizing on it in the capitalist society. And all of the capital was capital gains. And then they get relief from capital gains taxes so that they never have to feel the pangs of poverty. Mm hmm. Right. So this is the vision tool. Mm -hmm. Right. So all of these things we're looking at, they are taking what's natural to us and weaponizing it against us. Mm -hmm. And this is how we end up where we at now. Yeah. Okay. Trying to come from up under it. Right. So we did. I did a show with you and Billy talking about um, Earth Rovers and the human body. Mm -hmm. So. You talked about cycles. So in that cycle, was dragons the Earth Rover? Because this is just a hologram. We're really, you know, we're multidimensional. So they had, people, they had people walking around with dinosaurs. Uh -huh. They weren't but, just dinosaurs. We was back there, too. No, but the actual dragons, did we use them as rovers from a higher state of consciousness like we use the human body? No. Okay. We use the same... Organic or what we call arm, leg, arm, leg, arm, head, the same a lot design of the current physiology, but it probably was bigger and more robust, like uh, Austro Africanus, yeah, or Austro Robustus. Uh -huh. When you look them ancient, you understand they was much a much more sturdy species of human. Everything we are, we, we didn't been, everything you could think of, we've been through those cycles. Mm -hmm. We always are able to communicate with all of the other species of the planet telepathically if we just understand them. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the prerequisite. That, that's why you study the thing that you think is your totem animal, because the more you know about it, the more it opens up what's called the sympathetic link. What's now, the, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's the that's the beginning of telepathy, right? Right. So, if I want to, I can lay in the bed and meditate on an eagle. If it's an eagle anywhere in where they can lay eyes on what I want to see, I can see it through Ooh. the eagle's eye. Ooh. Ooh. So the eagles, your totem animal, right? One of them. I got a lot of totem animals. I'm like Doctor Doolittle. What's another one? Uh, the gorilla. That's why the sick eight. That's why you got the, the sick eight. Yeah. Yeah. That's my prime totem. Right. I got several bird totems, but the gorilla is my prime totem coming from my father's land. Right. My mother's land, it would have been the elephant, but um, I'm like my father's son. I'm a, mama, I'm a mama's boy, but I'm my daddy's son. That's the monkey riding in the town on the elephant. They didn't know he was going to grow up to be a fucking gorilla. All the time, they thought he was a chimp and tried <laughs> to treat him like a chump <laughs> <laughs> until he well, bite their face off. Uh, well, what Jay-Z said, little, little monkey nigga turned gorilla. <laughs> That's what Jay-Z said. A reason mm -hmm. So C. Dick said like remote viewing. So when you talk about this totem animal and you talked about yeah, this remote viewing yeah. through, the, through the totem animal. Right, right. Yeah. Only the, the they can see in real time anything that's an eye shot of them. Yeah. When I go to the uh, zoo, mm -hmm. I can feel the gorilla heart beating wherever I'm at in the zoo. Yeah. I'm clubbing close enough proximity, I can feel his heartbeat. The irony of it is, is it's certain dudes that was locked up 
when I got close to them, I could feel their heartbeat the same way. Mm. It's kind of spooky when you first experience it, but after you figure out what you're going through, it makes perfect sense. It's a sympathetic link. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> From a common total. Mm -hmm. Like, if I be around lions, that's my father's totem as a Leo, but his family line is the giraffe off his mother line, mm -hmm. right? So I can tune in to them animals as a totem animal, but I don't have the same sensation that I get from the gorilla where I can actually feel his heartbeat if I'm in close enough proximity to him. Mm.